last night. Sudden F semifinal play. Lukowicz and Wernick on the men's side. Laliberti and Sanders on the women's side. For the right to gain today's final and a possible trip to the Olympic Games right here in Calgary. Laliberti over the world champion Pat Sanders leading 5-4, playing the 10th and last end. But you had to have this shot to ensure that win. It's across the hog line. They knew it was there. A clean takeout. Laliberti wins it by a final of 6-4. Eddie Lukowicz on the ice against Eddie Wernick of Toronto was leading 3-2 here in the sixth end of play. And this was the key shot of that sudden that semifinal match. They worked hard down the ice. A chance for a big three count for Lukowicz and his team. Eddie just past the guard. They knew they had it then. Makes contact. A clean takeout. And his three sent him on to a 7-2 win. And a date today with Pat Ryan, an arch rival from Edmonton. The round robin leader here in Calgary all week long. On the women's side, it'll be Laliberti against the fine team skipped by Linda Moore from Vancouver, British Columbia. Hi again, everybody. I'm Don Chevrier, the Max Bell Arena in Calgary. With me is Ray Turnbull from Winnipeg. And Ray, I would venture to say the competition here this week is better than any Briar, any national women's tourney you'll ever see. Any world championship, yeah. even. The cream of the crop was here, and they were just fantastic. They put on an unbelievable show. The shot making was fantastic. And we, you know, really it was. You saw all kinds of games, all different styles of games, and uh, the teams that have, are here today are going to put on the same kind of show, Don. What can be looked for in the men's final? A classic Western kind of uh, keep-it-clean match? Well, I don't think so. You know, th these two teams have dominated curling in Alberta, you know, for the last four or five years. And uh, you've got two st different styles. You've got Pat Ryan, who is a little bit of a hitter, likes to just keep the game clean and controlled. But Luke, Luke likes to mix things up. So I think you'll see lots of, uh, lots of come arounds, lots of uh, uh, closed ends. The women's match, too, could be very interesting. I think so. You know, Connie looked very, very good in beating Pat Sanders, the reigning world champion, uh, uh, last night. And uh, she had a game plan going in. She didn't let Pat get involved in, in that fancy game Pat likes to play. But she lost to Linda Moore in the round robin, which put Linda in the first place. So she wants it back, believe me. You bet she does. They all do. The chance to represent Canada, a rarity in curling at the Olympic Games. The women's match, we'll have it for you right after this from Calgary. With Ray Turnbull, Don Chevrier with you from the Max Bell Arena in Calgary. The culmination of a week of outstanding curling resulting in two final matches today for the right to represent Canada in curling a demonstration sport, but hopefully soon to become a regular sport in the Olympic Games. It'll all take place in the same venue right here in February of next year. And so there's a great deal at stake. You ask any athlete around the world if given a choice of one single event they would like to experience in their lifetime, they'll tell you. It is competing for their country in the Olympic Games. And here is one of the teams shooting for that target today. From Vancouver, B.C., Linda Moore with Penny Ryan, Debbie Jones, and Lindsay Sparks. Lindsay, certainly a veteran of Canadian and an international curling competition over the years. Wife of Bernie Sparks, who had a good week here, losing out of the playdowns that led to the men's final here this afternoon. These two are well-matched, Ray, and should give us a whale of a game. As you look at the Lila Birdie rink from Winnipeg, Manitoba, Connie the Skip. Janet Harvey is third, Kareem Peters second, and the lead is Janet Arnott. Well, you know, uh, Don, it's, uh, it's the biggest prize ever offered in, in the game of curling in our country. I mean, to curl uh, in, in the Olympic Games and uh, represent your country, I think if you talk to all the competitors, they'd tell you the same thing. This is the biggest prize. Just the thrill of perhaps even marching in the opening ceremonies of an Olympic Games would be suffice for many, but then to compete with the nation's and the world's best. Uh, right here in your own country as the host nation. It's got to be a real thrill. There's no monetary value. There's nothing beyond just the sheer one-time life experience of the Olympic Games. So a great deal on the line here this afternoon. And a lot of uh, curlers have gone home eliminated already. I'm sure more disappointed than they have been from losing provincials, briars, cash fields, you name it, over the years. I couldn't agree more. Anyway, this should be an excellent curling game. I was very impressed with Connie Laliberti last night when she beat Pat Sanders, the reigning world champion. She... She had a game plan. She came in. She's coached well. Jimmy Ursel here is, is here as her coach. And, uh, uh, you know, she just went into the game, and she controlled it from the offset and didn't let Pat, uh, uh, you know, play that quiet, that closed game that Pat liked to play. And uh, and they just looked very impressive. Actually, all week I was saying, uh, you know, earlier in the week that they had them look spectacular, Don, but they've just done all the right little things at the right time. You know, they just, they just not fancy, but winning. And we are underway with Janet Arnott getting the first rock of this ladies' final underway. 74%, as you see, throughout the round robin, and the percentages were pushed higher and higher by the very 
Uh, extremely high competition here, the level of it in Calgary. In many cases for Skip, the 80s was not good enough. You had to be in the 90s to make sure of a win. This one, going by the book, dropped out in front by the team not having last rock. That is Laliberti playing the Red Rocks from Winnipeg, Manitoba. Well, I think both teams will play it pretty open for a couple ends, in particular uh, Connie. Uh, uh, that walk came up sh short by Janet Arnett. They're sisters, of course, Don. You got uh, Connie Laliberti and her uh, twin sister, Kareem Peters, and then her older sister, Janet Arnett. So, uh, and the new member, the youngest member, the youngest competitor in this event, uh, Janet Harvey playing third. So We will see this lady's husband a little later on. His name is Pat Ryan. He's the skip of the Edmonton rink, competing against Eddie Lukowicz for the men's title. So husbands and wives with a chance to go together and compete in the Olympic Games. He'll play it pretty open for the first couple of ends. You can see Linda's just going to split that off. She gets uh, the penny as hit and roll to the corner. So that could be useful later on in the game. Yeah, those corner guards always are. It's been a long week, a very intense week of competition for these curlers. It began last Sunday. There was a round-robin format. Inevitably, with just seven games in the round-robin, tiebreakers ensued, and we had our share of those yesterday. They filled her down to these finals here this afternoon. There's a call out front, on the center line, short on the center line, to try and keep this tight. Once again, I think Linda will try the first couple. And now, we'll talk a little bit about the ice. Uh, it's been excellent all all week there has been a little bit of a frost build up there's some, been some humidity in the later half of the week and there's been a little bit of a frost build up oh along the edges okay. so the most of play don has been inside the eight foot and when you move outside that eight foot it's been a little inconsistent but inside the eight foot the eight, ice has been very consistent it is just a delightful day outside the max ballerina in the foothills of alberta and calgary temperatures you're reaching up into the 16 17 celsius range at a brilliant sunshine so Maybe that little bit of warmth could affect things as we go along here this afternoon. It's a little chance for uh, Linda. The rock steps into the ring, so it allows Penny to play this intern hit of hers, and she can get a little roll in behind the corner guard. She can get something started. Linda Moore having last rock in this end. Playing the intern. Hi. And it starts to stamp a little bit on it. Curl a bit. Very thin. And she'll lose it. Connie will play this up on the center line again, maybe to the top of the ring. Just out in front, there's the call. There it is. Not as deep as the last one, certainly. Once again, the intern. From Kareem Peters. 72% as you see in the round robin. Fifth among seconds in the women's competition. He sends the outturn raw on its way. She changed the turn to take a look at the outturn. Good thing to do early on. Yeah, I think so. You can work the ice a little bit, both sides. A sweeper's paradise. <laughs> you can relate to that. <laughs> Played lead for all those fine Manitoba teams over the years, Ray. A lot of years, Don. Any break you can get, you'll take, right? You <laughs> bet. <laughs> I had to chuckle at... Uh, at Eddie and Paul uh, last night, Paul Savage and Eddie Burnick, they were just getting a little tuckered out. And Eddie, had, uh, they had switched positions on the team where uh, Paul was, uh, you know, Paul was skipping, and Eddie was playing third, and he was brushing. And I think it started to show a little toll. They were a little tired. All the crews were exhausted. It was a very tough week. Yeah. This tough woman, schedule. as you saw, led all seconds in this competition here in Calgary throughout the round robin. And she will get a slight roll to the left. Just edging toward the 12-foot ring. It's a good hit. Nose hit. It forces Connie to remove it. Debbie Jones. Gets it well out in front. Good body extension. Good straight arm. Good control of her body through her slide. Nice early release. Little Manitoba flavor. Debbie grew up in uh, in Winnipeg. Actually, she started her junior curling at the Granite Curling Club. I had the chance to work with her when she was a... Young girl, and we won't talk about how many years ago that was. Not that many. <laughs> Too kind. <laughs> we were in the first end. It is, of course, the sudden F final for the right to go to the Olympic Games and represent Canada. And either way, Canada is going to have outstanding representation coming out of both these finals. That's for sure. The corner guard now may come into play, finally. As Linda Moore is going to ask her third, Debbie Jones, or her second at least, Debbie Jones, with her last rock, try to draw back into the corner of the house. Outturn draw for Debbie. 
try and get in behind this corner guard, get something started. Linda, of course, with last rock, would like to get a little jump in this game. She has a world of room. No need to even touch this one. Might have overthrown that a little bit. Surely yet, the draw weight can be elusive of the first hand and was there in that case. The one thing we have to remember, though, the critters do get a chance to practice on the ice surface, Tom, before the, you know, before the game. So, you know, they get to that, uh, you know, they get to know that draw weight a little quicker than normal. And it, Debbie just uh, came out a little fast. And, and probably the anticipation there was that she was going into the edges. And usually when, uh, all week long, when you've been going into those edges, they've been digging a little bit on you. So we go to the thirds now. Janet Harvey for the Lala Birdie team. Third among thirds around the round robin. Connie's asked Janet to, to curl away from that corner guard, get it to the open side, into the rings. Try to avoid any kind of a roll in behind. Okay, Jan. Janet, uh, all the way up to third, is only 20 years of age. A little heavy with her attempt there. And she is a uh, rid of junior competition. All-star second of the 84 National Junior Ladies and finished third in the Canadian Junior Ladies a skip of that team in 86. She's the only change on uh, Connie Laliberti's uh, team. Uh, Chris Moore, who was here actually as a skip during the uh, during the round robin, that was on one of the teams that was put together out of the camps. Don was uh, Connie's third in the in 1984 when she won the World Championships. Here is Lindsay Sparks, who has skipped many five teams of her own over the years: national women's competitions, World Championships. Now playing third for Linda Moore. Lots of room. Yeah, there you want to get tight in behind there. They better cut the ice out. You can see by a margin it passed the guard. It is not going to be buried. The deeper it goes, the far uh, the more it is buried, but the easier it is to get to with quiet weight. Well, she can see pretty well the whole thing. Yes, she can. As we go through the to the game, Don, we'll try and talk a little bit about the various styles of deliveries and mm -hmm. keep our viewers uh, up to date on how the ice is, you know, if it's changing. Just about the entire rock showing. Out turn hit. Janet's been very, very consistent, and especially last night, she just made everything in sight. Hurry! Hurry, hurry, hurry. Starts to snap a little bit now, but she should have enough room. Quietly easing it out and gets a fine roll. Tucks it in behind the guard, in the corner of the flower foot. The thing you notice there is a very little movement after the rock made contact, and, uh, you know, it stayed in the rings. Uh, she just caught you the see any of quarter it? of it. It's not a bad chance for Linda, though. She can sit down on top of it. You know, you think, I think she should maybe use this. Is it, is you want to try and move it? I wouldn't. No, I, I, I would play down to it, too. I mean, it is early in the game. You don't want to have to draw against two or three, but she's going to have Lindsay play the intern hit. Let's move it, she says. She's lots of room, because there's lots of room past that long corner guard. And Lindsay's last rock of the first end is on its way with a lot of room. Way off and lay off, she says they're right. It may start to curl a bit here for her now. She may get a corner of it. Just. You've got to keep in mind that playing on the edges is just not quite as consistent as it has been from eight foot to eight foot. So that may be the reason that uh, Linda didn't want to draw to the face of it. Cause Connie will go to the open side now, Don. Yep. Stay away from potential trouble. And there's probably a little uh, butterflies in the stomach, I would think, in this game. I'm sure there are. Try and get settled down. And it's like every other sport, you know. Once you, you know, the kickoff or the drop the puck or, you know, you want to throw the first couple rocks just to kind of get yourself in the flow of the game. And that's very, very important in this game as well. These athletes uh, physically in good shape and so important, especially when you play these long round robins that you... You better be in good shape, you're right. You bet. Well, draw weight has been a little elusive for both these teams in the first end. Perhaps the ice is a little keener than they bargained for. And Connie here is off the back. What time are you getting over? You're part of the, you know, part of the... Uh, yeah curling fraternity is like of playing in cash fields and many, many bond fields throughout the year. And, you know, they play three, four games a day in some cases, three in particular. And uh, uh, it's imperative that, you know, you keep yourself in shape and 
And when you get to a round robin like this, because you not only if you get physically tired, Don, you get mentally tired. If you get mentally tired, you make those mental mistakes. And 90% of the time, it's it's the mental error that you know all these critters have good, strong mechanics, and it's usually the mental errors that to, you know they make that let them down. Uh, she's going to stay in the open here and just trade shots. See the way blank this end looks like she will with that ice. Yeah, that's what she's trying. A little early to go gambling. If you do get one in behind the guard, then of course uh, Lila Birdie could freeze to it. You might have trouble. The first end might get it stolen on you. So Linda, well, she's playing the out no, turn. she is going to play the out behind the guard, Don. She really cut the ice down. So let's see. Not a bad chance here. It's pretty firm. May dig in now on the uh, outside part of the sheet and does go right off it. She doesn't want it too deep. Right around the T line or ahead of it. Slides just a hair in behind, but a fine shot nonetheless. It's actually a good call by Linda in the sense that it's a two-on-one uh, shot. She had two rocks left with Connie only one, and and if she tucks it in, if it just digs in a little bit more for her, she tucks it a little tighter. Then she, you know, she sets up the possibility of scoring her two points. So, well, she's going to test the opposing skip early because this is no gimme. It is makeable, but by no means easy. You see just a few inches of ice with the out turn again being used by the. Laliberti ring. There's Janet Harvey with the broom. While Linda and Lindsay wait for their opportunity to decide the outcome of this first end. Ten end games. Universal now in the world of curling. When Ray Turnbull swept. He swept a lot of 12 end <laughs> Nice guy. <laughs> That's true, though. We used to play those 12, 12 end games. Coming over now, it starts to snap right about here. So she's got good line on this, letting it settle in. There's the takeout. One rock to come in the end from Linda Moore. I should be able to throw weight out at somewhere. Mm -hmm. well. there. Is that much? Okay, then. The microphone's fantastic. It really takes you into the game. Uh, oh, sure. You can hear Linda discussing it uh, with Lindsay. She cuts the ice down all the more. I would expect the weight will be up a little bit more. She wants to corner this roll out and carry on to the second end with last rock advantage. That's the plan. That is the plan. <laughs> Steps the weight up a little bit. They jumped right on it, Don. Now they get off. Just wants the corner of it. Try and get it to stick there. around. And does for one. So the plan goes awry. A single cap of the first stand for Linda Moore over Connie Laliberti. And we'll return to the Levant's National Curling Trials right after this. Underway in the second end with Linda Moore leading Connie Laliberti by a point. Of course, last rock advantage to Laliberti here, and she quickly went to the gambling tactic of putting up a corner guard, which you see now has just been taken off by the second stone for the lead player for the Moore team, Penny Ryan. Well, let's talk about how it got set up, though, Don. Uh, Penny Ryan was asked to put her first one short on the center line, and she slipped it through the rings, and so it allowed uh, Connie Laliberti, and she indicated earlier that she was going to, you know, become a little aggressive. She threw uh, corner guard up with Janet Iron's first stone, and... Uh, Linda decides to split it. She split it off. A good shot by Penny Ryan. And now you're looking at another corner. They're going to brush this one, though. This is going to be deeper. Try and bring it to the rings, I guess. And she will just do that. And also, a good point early in the match, no matter what the level of competition, of course, very high here, is that if you get a rock split off on one side, then go to the other side. Don't let them go to school over and over again on the same ice. And it's very important early in the game. Debbie Jones. Second for this team skip by Linda Moore. One of the Jones girls. <laughs> Plays it outside in and gets rid of it that way, but it stays in play. I'd be interested to see what uh, Connie does here. That's pretty tight to the ring, so she'll probably go to the other side. Yeah. She's taking a long look at it. She's going to slide underneath it. Wasting no time. 
That's why I think this match could be particularly interesting today. I think as it develops, you'll see some uh, fascinating situations between these two. Here's Colleen Peters now. going to be buried it'll be just back of the T line but available and don't forget about 30 minutes from now the men's final between Ed Lukowicz of Calgary and Pat Ryan from Edmonton will be underway and we'll be covering both matches for you and uh, bringing you all there is to see here in Calgary at the Max Bell Arena in the Olympic curling trials finals this afternoon good shot by Kareen it's also behind the T line so if she gets the uh, Debbie hits it on her nose and stays uh, then they can use it by just tapping it back Tommy can just use it by tapping it back. If he happens to sit right there, it curls it up at the end to make contact, and we'll be just off. So Debbie not entirely satisfied with those two shots, as she reflects on them. Turn, come around. For Peters. Here's a lots of room, and there is. Rock's digging in, but they had no choice. It was simply going to be back where the other one was and available, so they leave it there and see what happens. Yeah. Well, Lindsay has a chance here to hit this, and she hits it on the nose, and uh, even if she rolls a little to the outside, she'll come off her own and probably stay in the ring, so she'll force Connie to hit it. Penny Ryan. She'll have a half an eye on the, uh, the next sheet uh, as soon as those men get started, I would think, Don. Yeah. The same situation could have prevailed for this woman, Lindsay, whose husband Bernie Sparks was eliminated here on his way to the final. A little safer, maybe, a little straighter playing it outside in. That's what they do at get it with a roll in toward the edge of the eighth. This is Lindsay's intern. She's left handed, and uh, as you mentioned, Don, they played from the outside in, and there's no question that when you do that, they run quite a bit straighter. won't happen here, but you can often get a sheet of ice where it'll fall all the way to the boards by doing that. <laughs> but not here where the ice has been superb. Ice is great all week. Right up. Yep. Looking for the roll. Whoa. The end of Harvey Stone. Not much. <laughs> Janet, just 20 as we told you, the youngster on this sheet. You've got curling shoes that old, right? <laughs> Older. <laughs> that ran straight down. Just try and roll it away from that corner. Get over as far as you can. Yeah, try to change the shot. They'll make it easy for the opponent. We're in the second end. The Moore's team leading the Connie Laliberti team from Winnipeg. One to nothing. Janet Harvey's second shot of the end. Well, they've really just played the, the rock up and down the ring. It all is curling at the end and makes a nose hit. Let's take a look at Janet. Gets the rock well out in front. Good extension, good straight arm, good balance. All uh, eight of these girls throw from what we refer as a, to as a balanced delivery. They have uh, 
you know, good control of their bodies throughout the whole the whole motion. Lindsay holding the broom for her skip, Linda Moore. Linda represents the North Shore Winter Club in North Vancouver, where I'm sure there is a gathering today. Close grip, well out in front, early release. She really gets rid of it early. It'll snap at the end. Got a corner and keeps it clean. This allows Connie to roll in uh, the player, drawing behind that uh, corner guard. Let's take a look at Lindsay. She has a very quick release. And now the extension, use a little bit of a body extension, gets rid of it very early, especially on these hits. But good control of her slide. She's got, all, once again, it's a balanced delivery. Shoulders are square. You're going to see quite a contrast to that when we watch Pat Ryan play a little later and Randy. They, they throw from what's uh, referred to as tuck deliveries. Just a shade so we'll less, Jen. Yet Good. Luke and John and Neil and Brent Syme all throw from balance deliveries. So we'll be able to show you the, the two very distinct styles. Well, many of these curlers have used the same release point, I've noticed. And uh, to get there, you've got to have leg drive that determines the weight of the rock. Well, it's the speed from the hack, Don. You've yeah. got you know, you to alter that speed from the hack. And uh, one of the things I think that uh, mistakes that a lot of young curlers make in particular, a lot of curlers, is they use too much speed from the hack. You know, we curl in much better conditions nowadays. We have Just much faster sliding time. material on our shoes. Good chance for Connie here. She'll try and play this, uh, this intern come around, try and tuck it in behind that stone, the stone belonging to Linda Moore, that's just outside the rings, about the 10 o'clock position. Connie is uh, an individual that really worked hard on her game. She threw and threw and threw. She made herself into an excellent critter, and the result was a 1984 World Championship. It's a little strong here, though. Yeah, it is. She pumped that one right back. So weight has been a battle for Lila Birdie in the first couple of events here. Lots of weight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I think you're looking at, uh, you know, what he has to be done. Okay. Well, then they're trying to get in now. Maybe she can force Connie to take a single. She'll go around her own stone, Don. Well, they should know what it takes to get there now. They've played a few down there, haven't they? Uh-huh. Looking at it, it still looks like a lot of ice to really get tucked in behind the corner of 12, but we'll see. Linda Moore's last rock of N2. Still one to come from Lila Verde. You can see that with the uh, with the draw shots, a little longer extension. You want to make Connie hit this. You want to give her the free throw through. What oh, really dug in. Good shot. Pretty good shot, Don. Yeah. Not completely buried. But a uh, fine shot nonetheless. Just gets it by now. Just watch it dig in here. You can just you can almost see the frost filled up on the edge of the rings there. Yeah. It just digs in. Connie can see about half of it, so she'll try and hit this and roll out. And she has room. It's behind the tee line. Of course, Linda trying a fairly similar shot, wound up taking one in the last end, trying the blank. So I'm sure Connie's got that on her mind, too. But, of course, the first uh, intent, total concentration's got to be on making contact. Nice, clean delivery. Has it away. They're going to flirt with that guard. It does, but it's by. However, she, too, trying to blank, will have to settle for a single point. So they're even after one, tied at a point of each here on the Mats National Curling Trials. We'll back after this. Played here in N3. Ray, let's get up to date on those. Well, Connie had took that single point, so she threw a rock on the center line, a center line guard, and uh, out in front, a good shot here by Penny Ryan because she hits and she rolls to the corner. And Linda Moore with last rock, of course, uh, wants those corner guards. Now, to defend against this, your choices are to either split it off or throw up your own center line guard. But uh, Connie Laliberti chooses to go around it. The key here is to keep those rocks in front of the tee line. So now there's two rocks in play. 
And now they're going to look to double them off. It's tied at one. We're playing in the third and the sudden death women's final for the right to represent Canada in the Olympic Games of 1988. Then is going to play the top one and try and drive it back onto the back red one on the La under the Laliberti stone. Out turn hit from Penny Ryan. She hasn't got a lot of weight, Don. Now she would drive it over onto the other and leave it. Good shot. Same situation. You can see Connie taking a look at it. Yeah, I'd expect she'll go right back in behind it. Doesn't want it too deep, just up 12, edge of the eight, it looks now, like. That's right, but the trouble with defending this way is that, boy, you got to make these shots. Oh, yes. I tell you, you slip in behind that T-line or... The strategy is one thing, but the execution can be quite another. Good line. It's going to be a great shot. Oh, is it ever? Okay. She is going to love it. And she's got it, you know, just on the edge of that forefoot, just fighting the pull on the edge, just almost fighting the forefoot. Good looking shot by Green. Best shot of this day so far. Just gets it by. Good brushing. Leonard Harvey. Not too deep. One more look at it now. You see the margin by which it passed that guard. Makes a good move, too. Look at here, Don. It, it starts to move a little bit, so that's a good indication of how it is moving, and that's, that's a good sign. And it, uh, you know, when that, if that kind of thing continues, you're going to see lots of uh, those come-arounds, and that happens inside. They don't mind doing that kind of thing inside that 8-foot. They get a little nervous when they move outside to the 12-foot because the ice isn't quite as consistent. Which means that maybe a two- or three-point lead may not mean anything when ice is like this. When ice is straight, it's almost impossible to catch up, but it does duck and dive and it uh, could be a good matchup for us debbie through this outside and you know when you go from the outside in they run pretty straight is she going to oh get a corner dear. of it i don't think she's got anything that's the way you can't miss you know, what linda was doing was just playing that straight back trying to exchange the stones but you have to at least slip them get it open well she thought outside in because she saw the way the draw really ducked there at the end and was afraid her takeoff might do the same thing so she came from the out turn side and it just drifted wide and stayed there deb just got it outside a little bit this call will be interesting. Advantage, Lala Birdie. Want to split the house, she said, or you want to put out the guard? What would you do, Ray? Well, I think she, you know, she's got a good rock in there. I might be tempted just to, to come around again or just leave it you know, tight and okay. short. Just in behind, top of the 12, just to tease her opponent maybe a little bit. Right in that area where she's uh, banging her brush. We heard a good comment uh, yesterday from Lukovic in his game. He says, you know, in every game, you've got to make a move. And, uh, and he was playing Eddie in the okay, sixth end. He said, you know, we might as well make it right now. Now well, she's widened the ice. It looks like she's going to uh, do what she indicated. Have it near the center line out front, just to the I right think, of it. You think, I may, she may have changed her mind. She talked to the girls the other end. She may be playing the outturn draw to the open side. Yes, yeah, you got it. She's going to draw to the other side and lie to She got up there, Don? Yeah. With a lot of scrubbing. She'll have a piece to 12. Pretty good shot. A long double there, however. Long is right. That's the key <laughs> word is long. I think you'll see Linda go up and run the front one back again. Yeah, that's your best bet. That rock, take out. that rock doesn't really mean much to her. Yeah, it's two for one here. A, you clean off the guard. B, you really get all the bonus points by driving it back and staying. They no. wait for it again. She might have flicked that a little bit wide, Ray. Well, you heard Debbie's comments. No. Oh, dear. She just she put it outside, and she knew the minute she did. Yeah. Those are two she'd love to forget and get back. Good chance here now for Connie Laliberti. To reflects on her situation. Okay, where do I go? She really didn't give either of these a chance. No, she she flipped. I think she, that Connie 
she just took, put it outside and we talked about it in the last stand on that the minute you do in that outside in shot if you put it back at all it goes on you it won't do a thing for you once you right. start wide you stay wide out there with the out turn okay. Connie's, Connie's thinking about the come around the out turn come around and she talked to, to Janet about the tap back too now the trouble with, with this out turn is uh, come around you got to get it in there or you allow a minute of play with Lindsay's shot to hit and roll this is an either or shot if it snaps bump it up if it gets by fine let's see I think she's playing the come around though yeah, starting to snap you can split them both on get yeah, the shooter it's on really as well. coming over so she will bump it up and that'll work out fine for her not under cover but she is lying a firm two now can I try this one It's but always tough, Ray, sorry, when you have last rock and you have to spend your end playing defense. And that's the situation here. Yeah, you'd like to be on the offense for sure. You can roll to about there. Well, they reflect on this shot, and we'll be right back to the Labatt's National Curling Trials after this. <laughs> Lindsay Sparks with the outside in hit on down at that point, uncharted waters here on this sheet. She wants to catch it on the inside and roll, but it's looking more like it's going to be in the area of that front stone, and we'll just graze it, leaving Lala Birdie lying to it in firm command of this end. Yeah, Connie's in good shape. Uh, the one bonus uh, for Linda Moore is she does have a hammer at the last rock on. Did Lindsay turn that in a little bit, or was it just not the shot to be made with that kind of ice? It didn't take very much ice at all, so uh, it seemed to work right away. She may have just started it over, or, as you say, turned it in. Lala Birdie relishing okay. in a harvest of red. She play this garbage, you play it good and tight. Janet Harvey. The out turn. They know it'll move here, so they uh, just want to sweep it for weight. Make sure it's got the correct line. Now it'll do its little tuck at the end, and she's got it certainly covered from the outturn side and gives her a little tease from the other side. But having seen what Lindsay did, they probably have to ignore that possibility. Yeah, you can't see it from the from the either turn, Don, the way it runs straight really. down. Yeah. Now she's got a choice here. She could uh, play her, you know, to drive that one back with Lindsay's last shot, the yellow her own stone, or she could play the draw to come around. I mean, I don't, okay. Meanwhile, well, the men are underway. Pat Ryan, Ed Lukowicz, the Battle of Alberta, and all of Canada. The right to represent Canada in the men's competition here at the Olympic Games. It'll be in this very same Max Bell Arena, which will be increased to about 4,000, holds about 2,200. And the crowd's slow coming in today. They're enjoying this Calgary sunshine this afternoon, but they are coming in in dribs and drabs as these finals progress. Now, Lindsay, who had that tough miss on her last shot, knows the importance of this one. Well, as I suggested, Don, she's going to play this hit, try to run it right back, and you can see the ice she's taking. So, you know, the Debbie's shots may have been a combination of the, on the first one, for sure, of maybe taking a little bit too much ice, plus the fact she put it out. No. No. Yep. They're watching it close. We're going to drive it straight back onto the Alberti Stone. It doesn't curl much here, but this one comes at the end. There it is. How about this? Good-looking shot, isn't it? That's a great shot by Lindsay Sparks. If it curls a little bit more, Don, she drives it straight back and it would remain buried. Exactly. Had a tones for the first shot. She just had to curl a little more and she would have driven it straight back, but uh, she's happy to get that shot stone that was fully buried. Connie, of course, would like to hit this one and roll in behind the guard again. Yep, cross the face of the rock and roll to the right behind that yellow guard stone out in front. 1-1 one, one is your score as we play the third end. Connie Laliberti from Winnipeg, Manitoba. Teaches curling, works exclusively in the game of curling. Waiting for it to cross the face of the target rock, but it's going to catch it on the other side. Have a little roll over there and get right in behind her own shot. Oh, good shot, though. She's got both those rocks buried. She's going to force uh, Linda Moore to play the draw here. That's even better than rolling the other way behind the yellow guard. So, 
this is where it doesn't curl very much. Right there? Where, yeah, anywhere in front. Yeah. Here's the shot. Yeah. Couldn't have worked out better for him in this last shot, Ray. Good roll. Well, you know, the nice part about this shot for Linda Moore is that it looked, it looked all along in this end that she was going to maybe have to Can draw. Can you pitch so more? Nice. So it's nice to have the draw, wait. at least with your first right one, to get a feel for that draw weight. I would think. Just want a corner freeze, lay up beside those two for shot. Do you agree with the shot? That's yeah. all she has, really. Okay. <laughs> huh? That's cute, eh? Do you agree with that shot, she says, to the girls in the front end? Penny and Debbie? I think she's got a draw, but she hasn't done anything else as far as no. I'm concerned. And the, I think the big point being here is it looks like she may have to draw with her last rock, so you better get a feel for draw weight. Good point. She's got room now. It took a little extra rice, remember? They adjusted it at the last minute. That may make the difference here, but now it starts to die. Oh, what a good-looking shot. It just stays in front of it. It's going to stay in front of it, though. Good shot by Linda Moore. Very difficult rock to get out of there. You can only see about half of it. I can still blast it out of there. Well, I'm going to do a little more than half of it. A little premature in my comment. You can see a little bit more than she hits it, uh, but she's got to just get by the front one because she can't afford to hit it on the outside. She'll leave it then. Yeah. So she's taking a minimum of ice. Interesting third end here in the women's final. This is the last rock for Connie. The final answer to the end will come from Linda Moore with a hammer. Rip, rip. Not coming the way she had hoped. But with the spin, she'll squeeze it out the back. Her own also goes out. Well, I don't think I can do anything but the same shot. Same spot. Well, Pat Ryan's got last rock here, and you can see the situation. There's a couple of corner guards up in front, and uh, Pat's got one tucked in behind. So with Neil Houston's last shot, Luke's trying to just chip it out of there. You can see him indicate the weight. Just tap it back. It is curling quite a bit on the guard. They want to roll this shooter in the rings if they can, Don. Perhaps not quite. All right, back to this uh, women's final now. Here is Linda Moore, last shot of N3. Again, you made the excellent point of going to school on the first rock. She should be able to come right back here with the same weight. But out comes Lindsay, concerned about the weight. It's got to be up in the eight foot. It's digging and dying, and she has brought it up short. So Lala Birdie steals the point. Two to one after three now. The women's final will return to the Labatt's National Curling Trials in Calgary right after this brief pause. Back with you from Calgary, Connie Laliberti with that studio saw on the third end continues to apply the pressure to the British Columbia rink skip by Linda Moore. It's 2-1 Laliberti as they play the fourth and an interesting start to the men's match. Here's Ryan lying to Eddie Lukowicz of Alberta is Calgary representation. Certainly in a little traffic jam here in the first end. Well, well Pat has last rock, you know, uh, and he got that, of course, by finishing first in the round robin. He was awarded last rock. That's uh, uh, Having won the round robin, he was given last rock and, of course, a bye to the final. So uh, it's a good chance for Pat to get off to a good start. Lukowicz there with a hit for second shot. And now Ryan, as you say, with the hammer in the first end, his first of two stones here in this sudden death men's final against Ed Lukowicz. He's lying shot rock at the uh, about the 730 position, uh, half in the 8 and half in the 12, the yellow stone for our viewers. And he's playing a draw to the face of the second shot rock. And if he can just glue this on the front of it, he has a chance at, uh, you know, maybe picking up three. If he can make uh, Eddie's shot difficult. Pretty demanding shot with your first effort of the game. But as you said, they warm up on the ice. They get the early feel for the draw away. Ryan waiting for it to come over. Here it comes. Maybe a little bit 
little bit warmer than he wanted to be. He's going to move it back and leave separation there. He did not desire. It's a good shot for Don because his main concern is to lie to and, you know, yep. tr try and pick up uh, two points. And Pat Ryan, I know one thing for sure that uh, Eddie Lukowicz doesn't want Pat Ryan to get too far ahead of him because uh, uh, Ryan's team in particular are as good as there is at, uh, at the hitting game and, and uh, very difficult to catch. So it's a good chance for Pat to get off to a good start. Lukowicz really gained momentum, I thought. I alluded to it earlier. Through um, yesterday's play and those tiebreakers and semifinal games, he took charge, and his team really started to get on a roll heading into this match today. But he's got a tough one, and he knows it. Well, he struggled earlier in the week, and, and in a game against Russ Howard is when it all started, I think. He made he made uh, two unbelievable doubles in the eighth end of that game to cut the end down to two. At one, When Eddie went to throw his first stone, Russ Howard was lying four, and... Eddie uh, got a double with his first one, Russ threw in July 3, and Eddie made a double with his next one, and Russ had a free drop or two. Uh, but had he not made those shots, uh, you know, Howard may have gone on to win that game, and, and that's kind of got Eddie going. And since that time, you're absolutely right, Don. He's played uh, very, very consistently, but he doesn't want to get behind this team. We did not expect all these rocks in play on the first end between these two. Bye. Here they are. It's Eddie's Bye. last rock of the end. Get a little roll in front of that stone. Yeah, he got a little roll, separation there, and he's lying shot. First and third shot are his. Second, of course, belongs to Ryan. So Pat has got a straight punch for two here to start the game. That's the best that he could do, really. He could, you know, he, he could have maybe rolled the other way and been uh, uh, partially in front of the stone, the red stone that sits at the three o'clock position in a 12 foot. But best he can expect is to force Pat Ryan now to hit and stick for his two points. So Ryan slides back for his final shot at the end. Meanwhile, in the women's game, Lila Birdie was lying three. There goes one of them, but she is still lying at least one. And the pressure continues on the Linda Moore team in the fourth end of the women's final with Lila Birdie ahead 2-1. Yeah. Good. Good. Well, you can see this situation. Now, Pat's playing a hit. He's, uh, he's got the second shot rock, a uh, yellow stone, and half neat and half the side. He can hit this rock on the nose. He'll pick up, pick up his two points. Pat Ryan, we'll talk a little bit about his delivery later on. He throws in what's referred to as a puck delivery. This rock's moving a little bit. They're really jumping all over it. Don McKenzie, Don Walchuk. He'll be on the inside of it, but how thin? going to roll too much, I think, Don. Yes, sir. What a break for Eddie Lukowicz. He gives up one, but he'll settle for that, as Ryan, who let all skipses you saw throughout the week, doesn't get what he's after with a takeout attempt in his final shot of end number one. And it's one nothing Ryan after one. So they'll reload with a 1-0 Ryan lead. And the women's game continues in the fourth end on the adjacent sheet. Again, Lala Birdie with nothing but red rocks in play. Two stacks, top of the eight foot, one, one 12 again. foot in the back. Well, there's a lot of pressure on Linda Moore right now, and it's been put there by just, you know, good shot making but from part of Connie one, and her teammates. I mean, she really has kept it on. She kept it on last end. She's got, and that's what this game's all about, exactly. Don. Exactly. It's a game of pressure, and if you can keep it on your opposition, really worry you know, about throughout the whole game, try and listen to what she has to say here inevitably it's going to pay off for you and ryan knows that he could have had two just a moment ago and uh, no question he would have worked hard to maintain the pressure on lukowicz so eddie got out the side door there a little bit of a break absolutely because pat ryan doesn't miss those hits and sticks very often I no sir you. linda moore North Vancouver, British Columbia. 85 Canadian and Whoa. world champion. Yep. Whoa. Playing Whoa. the double, I think, here, Don. Trying to hit them in the crotch. There's two rocks at the top of the 12 foot or 8 foot, I should say. There it is. One. No. Not, not quite. That's the kind of day she's had. And the team has had. The question is, who's second shot? I was wide. She was wide, she says. There's Janet Harvey taking a good look at it. The shot rock is the rock you see, okay. the redstone right there. They're moving back to the back one. Janet's taking a look at that. I think Connie thinks that maybe uh, Lindy is second shot. Yeah. She's going to hit this front stone. I do too. And you know, if she gets the yeah. hit and roll in front of that stone that sits right there at the top of the eight foot, you know, she's going to force Lindy Moore to play a cool draw again. 
And and I think that the point that we should make here is Lynn is going to have to go outside a little bit and come in towards the, the center to make it. And it's, it's not quite as easy when you have to go a little closer to that cross line. Well, she could also consider, which she is not, this little tap-up of her own rock into the eight-foot circle. She'd have uh, shock rock in the four, glide two under cover. But instead, she'll play it Stop, safe and try to take care of this yellow rock. She'll be happy with this. Flying three. Pretty good shot. I, the question here is now, can Linda hit the stone that's at the top of the eight foot on the nose and be shot? That's what they're considering right now. Which way do you want to come at it? Okay. Can play the out turn. Come right down the center line. She's convinced she can be shot with this. Has to be, of course. The draw would be ever so treacherous against three. Yeah. That's why the little hit and roll in front of that stone would have uh, could have forced. Uh, you could roll over in front of that red rock, the one she's going to hit right now, and, and half covered the back one. You could have maybe forced Linda to have to play the draw. Big shot here, though, Don. This is a key shot. Got a hit and oh, stick right here. Off. Plays right it from the out turn side, and she right calls on. them off. Well, she's got it outside a bit. She can't yep. afford to chip the whoa. front one. Yeah. Whoa, Lindsay says, whoa. She oh, got what it. a good shot. And she'll kill the back one. Good whoa. shot. She gets shot out of it. Whoa. Just. She just catches it and touches it. She almost hit the front one. She rolls and just bites. Now, look at the back shot. Almost drove it back. So we'll return to the Labatt's National Curling Trials in Calgary with this game tied at two right after this. Welcome back to Calgary, the Max Bell Arena and the National Curling Trials, sponsored by Labatt's. Pat Ryan, with a big chance in the first end for two, had to settle for one. Eddie Lukowicz has last rock in the second end of the men's game. But Ryan, again, applying the pressure. He's lying three at the present time here. And in the women's game, which was tied at two in a shot that Linda Moore had to make on the previous and the fourth, and just did make, allows her to stay alive because she could have been in big trouble if she'd missed that one, Ray. That was a big shot by Linda Moore. It ran right down the center line. She rolled in to get shot. Uh, big, big shot. That could have turned that game right over. They just exchanged stones here. Penny Ryan put her first one in the center line, and Janet... They're going to exchange Arna again. hit it on the nose, and Penny hit it on the nose, and now Janet hit it on the nose again, and that's the situation we're looking at right now. It's a chance now, though, for Linda Moore. They've moved the stone out a couple, you know, a foot and a half or so, so Linda Moore is going to ask Debbie Jones to go around it. Well, she's got a chance here for the first time virtually in this game to put the Lila Birdie team uh, under a little pressure on uh, in a defensive mode because uh, it's gone the other way That's before it. That's a good ends. point, Don. Yeah, exactly. Chance to turn things around. So maybe that previous shot of the fourth end was bigger than we even realize at this moment. You see, De Debbie's just been struggling a little bit, but she's too good a critter to stay at that situation, so uh, she'll get it going. She missed the two out-turn hits a couple of ends ago that really hurt, and she's not too happy with this as we look at her. Got a lot of room to get by the guard. It's all a matter of weight. Here it comes now. Not as much as she had hoped. It's back of the T line. They laid right off. It covers in the eight foot, but you can see it. Well, you take that same stone and you take six or eight feet of weight off it, Don. It's going to curl a little more. It's going to be perfect. Just a little bit, just a little bit heavy. That's all the difference right there, the six or eight feet. So this is Kareem Peters now at a very impressive 79 percent after three ends. Hurry! Hurry! Right. sister, Kareem. See, she's a lot tighter to that guard. That's why they work so feverishly. It's by, and she's going to like it. Good shot. Girls from Manitoba look pretty tough to this point. They just get it by. Good brushing, too. They really stay with it all the way. Just get it by that front one. She had good bumper weight. However, it's still deep enough in the house, back of the tee line, for uh, Linda Moore to capitalize. Linda's playing the hit here, though. She's not playing the draw to it. She's going to 
And actually, she indicated to Debbie, you know, I want uh, good hack weight. But if she ever gets a slight inside roll, she's got a big bonus on this shot. You may have a shot at this. Let's see. Now it's going to stay on the other side of the rock. It'll roll slightly. I'll uh, stay right there. Back of the four foot. Little sigh of relief there by Deb. <laughs> yeah. Same weight. It's one for me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure Father Terry and Mother Joyce are sitting at home watching this. Shot though, because of course it's uh, going to go over and play it. That's right, the open side. But that rock near the center line can still come into play before this end is, is through. Lindsay Sparks meticulously cleaning that rock, any debris that may be just in front of the hack. Here, the left hander. Here's where it comes only at the end and does enough to get rid of it. Now the roll is interesting. She can hang on back there. While a birdie feverishly trying to get it out but does not. A little biter at the back of the 12 foot. Well, Connie Alberti with last rock would be, you know, it'd be interesting if she plays it. I don't think she will. Or you know, she's got a good chance to go in behind that. Uh, she's got the hammer here, which she could win behind that uh, long guard. Bump. And really Bumper. force Linda, but she's going to play it. And the trouble with this kind of a shot, uh, Don, is if uh, Janet Harvey hits and rolls out, you give uh, Linda Moore a chance to go around. This is the turn, the spot on the ice where Debbie Jones had so much trouble a couple of ends ago. But the ice has been cut way down this time. Tends to flare out a little bit there and take its time in curling. It'll come now. Good shot by Janet. Yeah, she's made a perfect weight to bumper, and that's what she did. Bumped it back. Now Lindsay Sparks. This is Lindsay's in turn. She's left-handed. She'll have an inside roll, maybe, of an inch. She threw a lot less weight than yes. uh, Janet did, and uh, they jumped, you know, they left it and left it, and all of a sudden it started to move a little bit, and they got back on it. Good shot by Lindsay. Same, Jan. Okay. There is the ice for third Janet Harvey. Play a big weight down here. You got to be quiet. It's going to be open. You can see how little it curls there, though. You really have to be careful. Very little. Okay. okay. While they await the next shot, we'll take a brief break here from the Labatt's National Curling Trials in Calgary. Stay with us. Namur has her first rock of the fifth end underway, and that's familiar pattern with the outturn. She's throwing more weight, certainly, than those who have gone before her, and it hangs out a little bit as a result. Now it comes. But she will roll all the more to the open side. I should try and roll her over a little bit because it wasn't going to come enough to get buried, so try and take that hit and roll away from Connie. They are tied at two, as you can see. Okay, yeah. Normal, just easy. Like, okay. Malabrudi saw the 
stronger weight that Moore threw and uh, reminds herself that we've got to just do this easy. Same weight that uh, her second and third threw a few minutes ago. One of those tricky spots on the ice when you use the outturn on that side. You can see a little ice uh, she's she's taking, Don, right in the right center of the stone. Yeah. Of course, she'd love to get the inside roll here behind that guard. That's part of the purpose of the shot. The way it runs so straight there, she may have a shot at just that. Even though Connie's only at 50% after three ends. Really doesn't curl much in that spot. Hangs on the outside and is gone. Hey, my guard's the same one Debbie tried to yep. around. She was full. Yep. I gave her there. Probably came out right there, but mine will move a little more. You're saying mine will move a long way. Of course, some players with their delivery do have rocks curl more than others. The release is the key to everything in a curling delivery, you know, and if you, uh, it's how you release the, the stone that will determine, you know, yeah, you how they curl the and same here too. how okay. you put the turn on in many cases. We've seen all week, uh, uh, Bernie Sparks, for example, his uh, his in turn will run very straight because he, you know, he puts mm -hmm. a lot of turn on it. And so he, he, as a result of that, he favors very much throwing his out turn in. And their curlers will have, you know, a favorite turn. and. We said a moment ago that that rock left out in front may come into play before this end is through. And Linda wants to capitalize on it right now, but she feels she's going to be tight to the guard. And they got to really get it by here. No. Nope. Boy, she's lucky it didn't curl more. She would have raised it in. Exactly. It's not what she wanted. Now, Lila Birdie looking for the blank here in the fifth end to go on to the sixth okay. with a chance for two. She tried that before as... Linda Moore did, and both had to take points the first and second end. Yeah. Bring you up to date on the men's game just a moment after we see this shot as third Janet Harvey sets the ice for Connie Laliberti of Winnipeg, Manitoba. Well, Connie loved to hit and roll out here and blank this end. But as Kevin Adams from Quebec says, take it away first. Make sure of it. And they work hard to ensure it. Now she's in the habit of sticking around today, isn't she? Takes the single point at the halfway mark of this women's final. The right to represent Canada at the Olympic Winter Games of Calgary in 88. 3-2, Lila Birdie leads. As part of the celebration of the 1988 Olympics in Calgary, the finest artisans have come together to design these prestigious Olympic coins. And now two new coins have been added to the set. Figure skating and curling, a demonstration sport for 88. The proceeds from sales of the coins will help to fund athletes right across Canada. Each member of the winning teams receive one of these coins. And the Labatt Brewing Company will graciously present a new Olympic coin to all the curlers competing in this week's National Curling Trials in Calgary. And a fine memento of this week and of the 88 Olympics they are. Now, the men's game developing into a second end. The last three rocks and here's Ray. Well, Eddie, Eddie Lukovic has last rock in this second end and it's a darn good thing he does have it. You can see he's coming down, hitting that stone, sitting there. Now, Pat Ryan gets a chance to hit this. He would like to roll away, unfortunately, he hits and sticks right on the spot. And now Ed with his last rock is looking at three Pat Ryan stones. That's the Pat Ryan pressure we spoke That's of before. Right. And here comes his last rock. They jump all over it. They hold it all the way. It's a single point for Luke. Thank goodness for that last rock. It's one all playing the third. And they're in the way in the third end. We'll keep you informed. But right now, this women's game. Interesting, too. 3-2, Connie Lillaberti, who for the second time in this game in the fifth end, had to take a point trying to hit and roll out and blank. And she leads it by one as the sixth end is underway. Janet Arnott. Now Connie wants this other in front on the center line. She does not have the hammer this end, having taken that single on the fifth. So 
bit. She'll drop it short near the center line out in front. Try to get something happening with a nose hit if it comes along. Well, Linda's going to hit it and try and come to the corner. She really hasn't been very aggressive. Uh, it's far enough out. You could consider coming in behind it, but she's decided just to hit it uh, with Penny Ryan's first stone and try and roll to the corner. This week's competition has meant that the curling season for already tired curlers has been extended <laughs> by about 10 days. But I don't think anybody's complaining no, considering what's at stake. It's an unusual opportunity. The bats have just put on a fantastic show. Here. As they always do. Yeah, they, they sure really, do. They really, really manage things well at these national competitions. Penny, 60% after five ends, the halfway point of this game. Look at the next sheet. Husband Pat. Yeah, she can't resist that <laughs> temptation, <laughs> I'm right. sure. How are the guys doing? Well, they're tied 1-1 on the third end there. Well, the biggest problem the two of them will have if they happen to win these games is babysitting. I guess so. <laughs> Next year. And probably they can't even stay together during the Olympics. Women's teams, men's teams, separate quarters, of course. But it's only for six days. This arena is going to have about 1,800 seats added to it. Now, I'm not sure how they're going to do this. You see this rock from Lala Birdie reach the 12 foot, but it'll bring it up to a capacity of about 4,000 for the Olympic Games. Here's a look at it, Calgary. Those flags will be the flags of many nations at this time in February of 88. Right now, they represent Canada's provinces and all the curlers competing here. Here is Penny Ryan now with her shot. In turn hit. You see the watch that uh, Penny wears on her hip? The timing of the stones. Most of the curlers will time the weight of the draws to get a feel for the ice. Some from hog line to hog line, some from set down to T line, some from hog line to T line. It's just a, a relating to the, how fast the ice is running, something to relate back to. Yeah, I first saw that with you in a sundial way back when. <laughs> <laughs> Had it tied right to your hip. <laughs> <sighs> Of course, Ray Turnbull, a member of the great teams in Manitoba over the years. Now teaches curling around the world. And gets to watch a lot of it sitting here doing television. Well, it's been great to me, Don. The game has been fantastic to me. I'll tell you, thank goodness for Terry Bronstein and his brother Ronnie who got me started. Sure, it's okay. Many years ago. So many we won't talk about them. It's been so long we kind of forget. But this girl here, Debbie Jones, I remember her as a 13-year-old uh, in my junior classes in Granite. She's been curling 19 years and she's not an old woman by any means. That's the way they'll start them young. Well, Linda really isn't, isn't, uh, she got a chance again, you know, she got the hit and roll out, and she got a chance to maybe throw up a corner guard or try and get something going, but she hasn't made any offensive maneuvers at all. And I would think if I was her against uh, Connie Laliberti, I would, I would try and push her a bit, because Connie's team is, uh, uh, you know, very, very consistent. They hit very well, and if you, uh, you got to press some of these ends, you know, all... <laughs> can't wait forever, and you can only do, you want to do it when you have last rock, and this is a situation. We'll be on the outside of it and roll away. Lala Birdie really had her on the ropes a couple of ends ago, and uh, Linda Moore had to make a pretty tough shot, and just did make it to stay in this game. And as a result, she's only down by a point now, and she's got last rock on this even end. And of course, last rock becomes more important on the even ends as the match progresses into the latter half. Maybe for our viewers that don't uh, do a lot of curling or watch a lot of curling, you know, uh, it's like a big game of chess played on ice. And, and you'll play one shot to try and set up another shot. And, and uh, in this situation, a lot of uh, an offensive maneuver would be to play the rock short, covering the edge of the circles, out in front. It's called the corner guard. And, and then uh, make force Connie to make a decision whether she plays to the center of her own or guard in the center of her own, whether she goes behind it like she did on the previous hand or whether she splits it off. And there it is there. Now, there's the corner guard. You know, she, she indicated the rings, but she got the corner guard. So let's see what Connie Alberti does here with Janet Harbour. Mercifully, it does not take as long to reach a decision as it does in chess. <laughs> and it's some long curling games. But I, th I think it's a good, that's a good way of explaining the game because you really yes, do plan is. so far ahead, you know? 
Now, Connie's going to draw away from that long guard to the open side. But this will give Linda Moore, you know, Connie would like this behind the T-line a little bit, I think, or at least on the T-line. This situation come on, sets, uh, come on, come gives on. Linda a chance to get the hit and roll. Shot, Jan. There it is, right on the T-line. Good shot by Jan Harvey. I'm sure viewers are asking, why shouldn't we, she go after that yellow guard stone and get rid of the problems? Would it be a matter of afraid of sticking around out there and just compounding her problem? Well, that's a good question, too, Chev. It's, it's you know, that, that's a way of defending it by splitting them off. Another way of defending it would be putting your own center line guard up and saying, okay, if you're going to go for your two points, you're going to have to do it inside that four foot. Uh, you know, it's, uh, or we saw in a previous game where she went around the corner guard, but she may have felt that's a little too long. This is a little chance for Lindsay if she can make a good shot here, and they know the path down this. A little too long and maybe a little too early in the end to do that because if something backfires, you could be looking at two or three. Remember, Linda Moore and Lindsay has her shot away for that team as last rock in the end. That'll stay just about where it is. Little roll toward the center line, capping the button in front. And the men's game, which is tied at one there in the third end. Two guards out in front, just to the left of center. And we have Skip Rocks remaining. Eddie Lukowicz, without last rock, will be firing first. And from the ice being given, looks like he's going to play the out turn around the guard. Meantime, this is Janet Harvey playing the hit on the Linda Moore shot rock, top of the four. Wants to roll away from the guard now. Not it's, much. It's moved over a little bit, so it gives uh, Lindsay a chance to get the roll. Here's fast Eddie with his first rock underway. Lukowicz trying to come around that short guard left of center, and it's got a lot of room. Staying out, Don. Come on, way back. way back to get some cover, but it's going to settle just back of the forefoot, wide open, as you can see, to the outturn hit attempt. Now, the shot rock belongs to Lila Birdie, top of the forefoot of the women's final. Lindsay Spark, her outturn, looking for the hit and roll behind the corner guard. Which turn is easier for a left-hander, <laughs> generally? I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know if they really, if there's one easier than the other. All I know is that you could throw both with both hands. You don't have to throw one turn. <laughs> ah, wait till that curler comes along. That's right. <laughs> Clean hit, little roll to the right. Every curler has kind of a preference. I prefer my out turn. I don't have, uh, it's not that I don't like throwing my in turn, but if I ever have to go to a key shot, I, I prefer to go to the out turn if I can. I know Bernie Sparks. He's got a definite for, preference. Yeah, I do. Yeah, and then Bernie, too. Yeah, for, oh, definitely, yeah. The bird sits, eight foot. And uh, Pat Ryan, looking at this, the rock, Lukowicz tried to bury, but put in the open back of the four foot. And this one, one tie, third end of play. Ryan taking about six inches of ice for the out turn. Play it fairly quietly. He wants to roll inside off this. I don't think he'd be rolling this inside. It's staying out. Well, that's a pretty straight patch of ice there. All the more in the open now, back of the four foot. A rock left for each man, and then three. Well, Connie's playing her intern hit here. Lindsay didn't get the roll she wanted. So she'll try to roll it away if she can. She rolls it to the other side. Good shot, Connie Alberti. It's right back where it started, isn't it? Yes, it is. <laughs> The Rocks dwindle down in the sixth end. Women starting, of course, a little bit ahead of the men. Men are in the third end, this one in the sixth. But some fine shot making in both games to this point, as you would expect in finals with the Olympic Games at stake. It is only April of 87. But in Calgary, you get that flavor. You get that feeling that the games are not that far away. CTV, of course, will have exclusive complete coverage right across Canada of an event long to be remembered, long awaited here in Calgary. No roll. On the nose. 
certainly have had some interesting situations, but this end has been fairly wide open. The latter half of it certainly. Nothing more than a single point in any end in either game today. Pat Ryan certainly had a chance for two. While Alberti has had chances for two. Linda Moore really scrambling just to stay alive and score one point, which she has done. Here's uh, what Luke is looking at. He'd like to get this hit and roll in behind those uh, center line guards. And here's what happens. No roll. Hits and sticks. Rolls a little bit to the outside. In the open for Pat Ryan to go after. Meantime, another straight hit on the nose in the women's game by Lala Verde. So she puts it there for Linda Moore to, from Linda's point of view, hopefully take and roll away to blank the end. Same blank situation was presented on the other sheet and made good on. So last rock advantage will carry in the hands of Ryan to a fourth end. And Linda Moore going for the very same thing right here. See Lindsay with the rock right in uh, the room right in the middle of that rock. And this time she'll get it. So the end is flag number six. And Lala Birdie holds a one-point lead. Two spots in the Olympic Games available today, but they're a long way from being decided. 1-1 on one the men's game. Ed Lukowicz and Pat Ryan playing a fourth end now. And as you see in our primary coverage for the first part of our telecast for the women's game, Connie Lala Birdie leading Linda Moore by just one point. At 3-2, to two, they have completed six ends of play. And we'll stay with this game, keeping you abreast of the men's contest. And then when the women's game ends, finally going to exclusive men's coverage here at the Max Bell Arena in Calgary this afternoon. Rock at the top of the eight foot. Redstone belongs to Lala Birdie. So here is Penny Ryan, the lead for the Linda Moore team, playing the outturn takeout on it. There's another rock in behind it, so she plays pretty good weight. But here's this tough spot on the ice where it tends to hang and run straight. At best, you'll have just the outside of the front rock and roll over to the right. Pretty good shot, though, Don. Hangs on. It's going to force Connie to go out there and play it. You know, watching this curling this week and the last couple of years really is a contrast to the way the game used to be played. Nobody throws big weight anymore. Of course, most women never did. But on the men's side, it's become a much more delicate game than it ever used to be back, say, five, ten years ago. Well, it's a game of feel, a game mm -hmm. of touch. And uh, that's one of the things that young curlers have to learn. Uh, you know, that's what separates the, you know, the young from the, the people with experience. For example, you never see... Uh, you know, you see many young junior teams to come up in this league. It's like junior hockey in the NHL and dominate. And one of the reasons is that they, you know, when you're young, you like to fire it, to fire it down there. And you have to learn that this game is a game of touch and feel. And you're right. That's been one of the biggest changes. I think that, you know, it's the ability to be able to throw those back ring weights and those light bumper weights and come around those long guards. Because the game is so closed now. But it's a full circle, full cycle, really, because way back when, curling was a very quiet, delicate game played mainly by old gentlemen. And as it evolved in the 50s into the 60s, the big weight came in, and now it's going back not to what it used to be 50 years ago, but certainly, as you say, a much more delicate kind of approach. Well, we play on such great conditions now with the, you know, the facilities we play under and the, and the stones we use. Everything. That's why the game is so fine now. You can... That's when you get really good conditions and uh, consistent ice, you see all kinds of sensational shot making. Nothing in play in the women's game in the sixth end, as you can see, with again, Debbie Jones smiling about it, but she's had a frustrating afternoon. Well, it's obvious she wanted to hit and stick there. She hit and rolled out. She stepped her weight up a little bit. You can see Linda said just a touch too much weight. Right up. Now you can see the concentration of Green Peters. Nice looking delivery, squarely in behind that rock. It's kind of a different delivery in the sense that Green doesn't use any backswing at all. She just brings the rock back and gets it. You know, she throws from what's referred to as a balanced delivery. She's a good body control through delivery, but uses very little backward motion. All the motion, all the speed for the body is coming from the leg. Remember Bob Pickering years ago? That backswing of his. 
safety. If the hack was too close to the glass, he was going to break it. He brought it up almost over his head and then back down the ice. One of the most unusual deliveries in curling. I, I, that's a little too far back for me to remember, Don. You may remember that. I remember. I thought I was talking to Ray Turnbull. <laughs> <laughs> he had the biggest backswing in the history of the world. Boy, he had a great touch, though. He brought it back and just set it down. Even on draw shots, he'd do that. And then just set it down gently. This is going to stay in play. A little roll to the left. Of the uh, more rock. Well, there's a good shot for Linda. That's a, you know, that rolls off the center line, and so it sets up the corner guard situation. I'll tell you how far back you go. You probably <laughs> remember Don Dugan. <laughs> no, that's way before my time. Perhaps. Out turn draw. She's going to try and come around the corner guard. And once again, to repeat what I said earlier, you're going to defend against this corner guard situation with the with the come around. You've got to really make sure you make them perfect. Keep them in front of those T lines. The action heating up. The sweaters are off. Janet Harvey's rock is going to flirt with and move the Linda Moore guard. So here's two of them in play. Here's a pretty good chance for Linda. I'd be surprised if she doesn't go now. She's got to make a move pretty soon. Let's try and listen. 85% despite that. Yeah. Okay. And now, wait a minute. Before you go. While you're here. We haven't really played a draw into here. So this is a straight spot. It wasn't wait, think of a move. My turn, yes. Yeah, I think that's about right. How about that? Just establishing the ice, Dawn. And she's right, they really haven't played a... They've played some, uh, this is Lindsay's intern, uh, they've played some shots in, in that way, but they've been a little further over. This way they're going right in towards that center line. So Question, question. Is it not tempting to try to bring it in the other way? Come with uh, with Lindsay's wide out turn, you From mean? From the left to the right, the left between to those two rocks. Might be awfully well, tough to get out if you put it where you wanted it. Yeah, it's a good question, but the reason you don't do that is that if you come that way and you don't get it fully buried and they hit it, they can then roll in behind the short corner guard, the yellow one. This way, if you come this way and you don't get it fully buried and half exposed and they hit it, they'll be rolling into the open. So that's what you said earlier about thinking ahead to what your opponent might do with the next shot, always staying ahead of the actual shot you're making. Exactly right. Here's Lindsay Sparks now. 73% after the halfway mark of this game. You heard Linda say this is a straight spot, and indeed it is until about here, and it starts to come as you'll see it move. She Too much, good, as a matter of fact. Good weight, Don. She just didn't... Uh, just didn't take enough ice, I don't think. Maybe not. She was intimidated by the fact that so many had run so straight, but I think they mainly run straight about a foot to the right of where she had the broom. I think you're not right. Not so much where she was. That's something else that skips have to uh, follow very carefully is the ice and remember even as far as three and four, five ends ago because you may not have played the same shot since that time. Remember what the ice does. Big part of the game. You and Tony could uh, hook up and maybe win the States out of Florida Did something. you hear Tony Kubek on the game on Wednesday? He said he had his gloves and he had his broom. He wanted to come here and he even had cleats to wear on the ice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that would make Curl Canada happy. Oh, yeah. The Iceman would probably kill him. <laughs> <laughs> you see him coming out of the hack and just freezing right there. Another chance. Uh, this is a good chance for Linda. Two points could you know, just put the ball back in her court and... Now, she's played this down. This is uh, Lindsay's last shot. Lindsay's in turn. She's left-handed. Lindsay Sparks, we're referring to. Five rocks left and a quartet of guards out in front, so we're liable to see some scoring here that might break this pattern of singles and blanks in this game. Concentration as she sends this rock on its way. Wait, 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 wait. Way out. Way out. Here's that tricky straight area again, but now it will move. Here it comes now. Right back, they want it. Nah, it's not going to do what she wanted, unfortunately. Just stayed out too long, Don. I just saw a bumper. Bumper right here. Bumper weight just means back to that pad there behind the hack with the out turn. One of the things I really like about Colleen Alberti is she's really definite, she's quick, she's, she's decisive, she controls the, the game, she plays the way she wants to play. She has, you know, good control of her team members. They work well as a unit. 
And the other thing is they're very well coached here. Jimmy Ursel's been here with them all week. He was, it was nice for him. He was coaching this team and watching son Bobby, who was playing lead for Eugene Ritzik. Remember that game in Moncton we played? I talked about Bob Pickering and big weight. Biggest weight I've seen in 10 years was from our executive producer today for CTV, Ed Marcel. It got so bad I had to go inside and stand behind the glass to hold the broom. I thought I was going to get killed out there. <laughs> Remember that? I sure do. The harder thrower than Roger Clemens. Now with this weight, it may not come much. Now she wants to roll. She will get the roll the other way if she can. Yeah. Little Finn. A little too far. Good call by Janet. The girls wanted to get on that, but Janet was right. It uh, didn't come quite enough. It's a chance again for Linda if she can get the hit and roll back in behind uh, the corner guard, her own shot. Look where the broom is, right on the inside corner of the rock. That's how straight it is there, perhaps how much it even falls with the outturn takeout. It certainly runs straight, that's for sure. And on this area, it's a little trickier. This is where the frost line is out here. And in other words, and for the viewers, that, again, that don't curl a lot, there's sometimes when there's humidity in the air, you find that there's a little frost build up on the outside of the edges. And the rocks have been running very, very straight here, but it's a little bit heavier out here. So you have to just step the weight up a little bit to account for that, as Linda does. Lindsay wants to roll here. She's got lots of rocks to roll behind. Good looking rock. Ooh, what happened there? That sort of jumped inside, rolled way over. That's not going to be too bad. It really moved in the last minute. They yeah. almost lost it and rolled too far. It just jumped as it got to the top of the 12 foot, and that's the result. Last rock. Going it through, Don Walchuk just staying with it, make sure it gets through. Pat Ryan blanks the end. That's the fourth. They still remain in a 1-1 tie. Tight as expected between Ryan and Lukowicz for the men's Olympic berth for Canada. Now, this game. Two rocks remaining. We're in the seventh end. Lala Birdie leading Moore 3-2. Well, this is a tricky little shot. We haven't seen a lot of these interns down here. And it's a, there's a, a hole, of course. You can see three quarters, almost the whole stone. But one of those shots, Don, you've got to hit the stick. You put this outside a little bit, you know how straight it runs. There's about one I can remember, maybe two in the entire game in this area. So Connie can't be totally confident as to what it's going to do here. So one thing advantage of having those practice sessions, you work the ice surface, you move across, and you get to know how it runs. She is staying out. Is she going yeah, to chip the front it's one? It's she drifting, is. It's drifting. It's drifting. She's wrecked on it. And she really threw it too. Pretty big weights, and it's a good okay. chance for Linda Moore to pick up a deuce and take a little bit of control of this game. But if she plays lighter weight, I know she's okay, thinking it's probably going to snap yeah. and go by on the other side, or maybe come over to the guard in front. So that was a tough situation for her. And a big break for this woman coming down the ice, Linda Moore, North Vancouver, British Columbia. Outturn draw for two points. Remember, she was really on the ropes in the early part of this game, and now this with the first the two count board. opportunity can take the lead for the first time since end one. Linda beat uh, Connie in the round robin. Actually, it was the last game of the round robin and decided first place. It uh, gave Linda Moore first place. So she'll draw to the fourth on the right hand side with the out turn. A little tougher, remember, coming back with a draw after a hit with her first. And they're laying right off this one for weight. It certainly got the port all right. Wanted pretty to settle good in, time. and it's going to nicely. She'll be up to the forefoot. Fully in the eight is ticked off for a pair by Linda Moore of North Vancouver, now in front by a 4-3 score in this game through seven ends of play. We'll return to the Labatt's National Curling Files in Calgary after that. Don Chevrier with Ray Turnbull back with you in Calgary, the Max Bell Arena, where two starting spots in the Olympic curling competition next year are being decided. A 1-1 tie in the men's division. Ed Lukowicz and Pat Ryan are playing a fifth end now. In the women's game, a moment ago, you saw the Moore Rink take a one-point lead to the two-count on the seventh end over Lala Bertie of Winnipeg, and they're playing the eighth now. In the audience watching this afternoon is Frank King, who is the chairman of the Calgary Olympic Organizing Committee. And Frank, you're seeing a couple of pretty good curling matches today. Don, these are really tight uh, matches today. It's anybody's game in both these matches. 
What about uh, tickets for curling? I know there's been a lot of uh, comment, a lot of maybe misunderstanding as to uh, how you can get tickets. Are they all gone? Are they available? What's the situation right now generally for the games? Well, Don, the organizing committee has sold out in terms of curling finals, but in terms of the curling preliminaries, we have plenty of tickets left. The other thing is that we've put some tickets available to travel agents throughout the world, so you could contact local travel agents or the Royal Bank for information on tickets. Are they packages that come with accommodation and, and your travel itinerary and the whole ball of wax, or is it just a matter of getting tickets from these sources? Well, certainly if you go through a travel agent, you would expect to buy a package of tickets and also accommodation and travel as well. Uh, from the organizing committee, it's just a matter of buying tickets straight out. What about Calgarians? I know that uh, when it's in your hometown, you kind of figure, well, gee, you know, we'd all like to be able to go, but it's not quite as simple as that, is it? Well, you know, what we have in the city of Calgary is probably the most enthusiastic large city that's ever had the Winter Games. Uh, every Calgarian wants to attend the Games, and we've been delighted with the response. Uh, we've had over 88,000 ticket applications so far. About half of them are from Calgarians. And is everything on schedule, Frank, uh, with just months to go now before the opening? Well, we're very pleased. Uh, most of the facilities are all built. They've all been tested. And uh, we're now just down to organizing the people, Don. We're pretty happy with what we see from here. And uh, you're pioneering in a way, although it's been around three times before, but I don't think curling ever had the impact in the Olympics that it's going to have right here in Calgary next year. Well, we hope that's true. Uh, it's clear we're going to have some Albertans uh, competing in the finals and uh, some great Canadians. And uh, I think that everybody's going to be very excited about curling. And I, I think this is a turning point for curling because if we do a good job in Calgary, we could expect to see curling in as a medal sport in the future. Yeah, wait till the world sees uh, on television uh, 4,000 people packed in here cheering like a hockey crowd. They're, they're going to recognize curling as an interesting sport. Frank, thanks very much for joining us. Let's get back to the game and hope you enjoy the remainder of them this afternoon. Thank you, Don. Good luck with those games coming up in February of 88. All right, Ray, let's get back to our two matches. Well, we got a little action here, Don. Uh, they just exchanged rocks through the leads and... Uh, all of a sudden, uh, Connie got one in behind the uh, tee line, so she, instead of hitting it, she, with Corrine, her sister Corrine's uh, first shot, she froze to the face of it, and in trying to remove it, uh, Debbie hit it on the nose, and so now it's a chance for Connie Laliberti to hit and lie, too. And that's, that's a good example, again, and once again, to, you know, uh, review uh, what the game was all about, in a sense, for those that may not do a lot of curling, is that there is a chance to use your opposition stones, Don, to your advantage. And it, it was behind the T-line, so Connie Oliverti just throws down to it, and Corrine, her sister, made an absolutely great shot, and now she lies, too. Debbie Jones couldn't get it out. She did the best she could. She sprung it, but couldn't get it out. So they'll make the play on the shot rock on the forefoot with the hope that you can get a roll back toward the other one, corner freeze it, maybe bump a little bit. Four to three, Moore leads Laliberti. Eight then. I'll remind baseball fans that tomorrow over many of these CTV stations, the Blue Jays will be at Comiskey Park in Chicago. We'll be there at 2.30 Eastern time, so check for the time in your area for Major League Baseball. This is Lindsay Spark with her intern. Now, there's a chance of a double here, Don. She can catch it on the outside. She can make the double, get over this little jam she's in. Staying out. You don't want to throw it through this hole. You know how straight it runs down here. Pretty firm weight, too. And one she corners and that, and she nudges right. the other one. Had to come a little bit more, Don. Yeah. A little bit thin for Lindsay. Now Laliberti is lying one. It still has the advantage in this end with the last rock in the eighth. And she'll put one right over there. Now the... Men's game lagging a couple of ends behind, but not an interest or excitement is tied at one. They're playing the fifth end. The yellow rock of Ryan is shot at the eight foot on the right. The two guards could still come into play here. We've got two skip rocks remaining in this the fifth end. We'll get back to that in a moment. <laughs> well, it's a free draw to lie two for Janet Harvey and spread them out. That she'll do. Connie's asked her to play to the other side of the rings. Get those rocks as far apart as possible. And a good chance for Connie Laliberti out of Winnipeg to pick up for two points. A little firm Janet was with yeah. this. They laid right off it. It's going to come back in the 12. And stay shot. right there. But a well-spread pair. Okay, let's notice this one. No double there. Even Danny Digit, uh, little Donnie, couldn't jump one across there. 
And no one played those shots better than he did. Now Ed Lukowicz on the other sheet. His first of two in this fifth end. Playing the in-turn hit on the path line Yellowstone. And that's cutting quite a bit. He'll be on the outside of it. He'll be lucky to save his shooter. He will not. Now, those two guards, as we mentioned before, could come into play. This is where Ryan, with his first, may decide to go a little gambling here and a chance to get two. Here is Lindsey Sparks, though. He's playing the uh, hit on the rock that was just put down by Janet Harvey back in the 12. Well, it's imperative, don't you, hits and sticks here to force uh, Janet Harvey to have to hit and stick, hoping maybe she can get the rock uh, hit and roll out and then go over the other side and get rid of that second stone. But... Right now, the Lila Birdie rink is looking to trade shots for a pair in the same with Last Rock and regain the lead. And you're, you're right about Pat Ryan. He's got a chance to go in behind those two corner guards that you alluded to, and that's exactly what he'll do. He has Last Rock in that end and play his out turn around those guards. Became possible only when Eddie rolled out. That's right. Eddie stuck around. Those two likely would not be in play right now, but the door is open. Yeah. Meantime, here's Janet. Don't want to lose this shooter, and indeed, they do keep it right there. So Skip Rock's coming up, and in the men's game, the first of two for Ryan, and there are the two guards on the left. He's going to play the out-turn draw to get in behind them. If he does, he's got a good chance for a pair in the end. Come on! It's really moving, Don. They don't get a bye. Don McKenzie, Don Walchuk. They held it all away. I want to make sure it's there, as you heard him say. Lots of room to get by. Let it curl a little bit. Won't be all that deep. He will be nicely into the eight and half covered. But again, that straight patch on that sheet as well prevented that rock from coming over a great deal. Yeah, Luke can see a little bit. It just happened. It's a very delicate shot. It's Linda. Out turn hit. Just trying to get out of this little situation she's in. Her first rock of the end. Okay, like to roll a little bit towards the center if you can. Nope. The exchange of colors continues. All to the advantage of Lila Birdie with last rock in the end. Well, you can see the precision curling. I mean, you're looking at uh, four teams out here as good as there is in the world. Any one of these four teams could go to the Olympics and represent this country and, and do an outstanding job. And to think that the losers today will have to go home without that trip to the Olympic Games. And it, it really seems hard in this situation. Here's Lukowicz now. He has got his final rock of the end. Still one to come from Ryan. The guard is going to be tight for him. He's got to get by it. Really curling now, but he's old. He just skinned it. He did make contact, as you saw. The yeah, shooter is did. rolling out. But he, he touched the guard. Grazed the guard, but still got what he was after. Now, Lala Birdie. He's got lots of action on this. So try and get it back. Lindsay, try and get it back as far as you can. Oh, it's a good shot. Okay, this is the straight spot. Straight up. That one's going to be hard to roll over. I want to hit this one. Do what? Yeah. It's a tricky spot. Okay. Yeah. You heard, you heard her say that's the, that's the straight spot, Don. Yeah. Tricky spot. So Pat Ryan, having just been denied the chance for two by that Lukowicz shot that grazed the guard but still made contact with the shot stone, throws it through for a third consecutive end. And it remains at the halfway point of this game, a 1-1 tie between this man, Pat Ryan, and his rival, Eddie Lukowicz. Now, Linda Moore, Lindsay Sparks mentioned the possibility of playing the other rock and trying to get a roll over in the direction of this, but she waved that off right away as she played a straight hit on somewhat tricky straight ice. You can hear Lindsay. All she can do is hit it and stick and hope that uh, Connie Laliberti will hit and roll out. That's the best she can do. That's what she has done. Mm. Yeah. All she can do in end number eight. This is interesting here, Don. Uh, we've seen mostly out turns down this spot, and uh, Connie's going to her intern. She does not feel confident, obviously, 
with the out turn on that straight part of the ice, so she'll go at it the other way. Well, there's, in, in fairness to her, too, you know, sometimes we like to play the curling turn because if there's a little, if one turn that curls a little bit and one that runs very straight, at least with the curling turn, you've got some control, control with your brushes. You know, on those straight turns or turns that may run very, very straight or even fall back, once they leave your hand, they're gone. You've got no control over them. Really moving, isn't it? They're really hammering it. Look at this. She wants to stick here. Good shot. Picks up two. Eight ends now. It is a 5-4 lead for Connie Laliberti of Winnipeg, Manitoba. The Bats National Trials continue in just a moment from Calgary. Max Bellarina in Calgary on a glorious spring afternoon, but inside here is some intense competition for Olympic spots for Canada, men's and women's divisions. Don Chevrier and Ray Turnbull with you, and here's the story. Three blank ends by Pat Ryan of Edmonton. Leaves it at 1-1. The battle with Eddie Lukowicz after five ends. They're just enjoying a brief break in that game. This one equally close. Lala Birdie of Winnipeg holding a one-point lead. They match two counts, the seventh and eighth ends, and is now 5-4 for the Lala Birdie foursome. Well, Connie got her two points back on the eighth inning, and that was a big two points to get back at that time. You know, you can see what uh, Linda's going to do here. They just exchanged a couple of shots. Uh, Jan and uh, Arna put the first one in the top 12, and Penny hit it and stuck, and Jan hit it and stuck. And now with Penny's second one, Penny Ryan, uh, she's going to try and hit it again. So obviously what uh, Linda's going to try and do in this end is move through the end and maybe try and blank it. Unless she can get a uh, wide-open miss to get her two points, and then... Uh, Win to that last end, that tenth end, with the advantage of Last Rock, one down. Penny Ryan, who we told you earlier is very involved in this game, but the odd glance over to uh, the adjacent sheet to see how husband Pat is doing in his battle with Ed Lukowicz. These are the final two major curling games of the season. And we are happy that we are able to bring them to you on CTV. From Green Peters. and Calgary. Twin sister to Connie Laliberti. In turn hit. Nice roll back to the center. That's where Connie would like to keep the play. Canada has been in the Olympics in curling. In fact, curling has been a demonstration for three times. It was a 1924, 28, and 64 in Innsbruck. But as uh, in our discussion with Frank King, it really uh, has never attracted the attention it's going to attract this time. Well, the game's grown all around the world now, Don. And, you know, the Japanese are now members of the ICF. And they're curling in New Zealand. They're curling in Korea. Finland, they're curling. So is there a curling club on the Ivory Coast in Africa? Yes, there is. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's just a hockey arena where they put curling. Ice. They have a bronze field in Abidjan every, every year, I think it is. And you're probably an honorary member. <laughs> Love those road trips, huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> we maybe should do something in Florida as years go by. What do you think? I think so. I think so. We could win that state. Yeah. Then the trouble begins. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as you have to play somebody. <laughs> Kareen Peters. Curling consistently after eight ends, as you see. But you just get a corner of it. And... Leave it open. But there really hasn't been a lot of offense, and the offense we have seen is kind of was uh, uh, forced upon them. No one really made uh, a very, you know, a definite aggressive move. Neither one of the two teams. And at this point, the advantage is with uh, Connie Laliberti. She's got the one-point lead. She's playing nine. She really has had the advantage all the way through, right from the outset. This would be an indication right here whether. Uh, Linda wants to throw up the corner or whether she takes this rock right into the rinks. And that'll tell us the whole story, whether she's going to try and blank it or try and pick up two. They're leaving this. Yeah, she wants a corner guard. Ah, she's going to get one okay, from Debbie. Says, let's try and, you know, let's try and get this thing going here. i yep. got to get a couple points back. And a pretty sound move at the stage with the thirds about to shoot now in this ninth end. Connie would like uh, very much to force her to take one. However, she's going to split this uh, front rock. Janet's got this outside a bit. Remember, Debbie Jones put two outside oh, here. Yeah, this what is way off. See what happens to it? You start wide, it gets wider. Janet, not very happy about that shot. 
No, she would. She just, she doesn't do that very often. She got it right outside. Unforgiving error. She's a good young curler, boy. She's got a great future ahead of her. And ice simply won't give you a break in that spot. So now that gamble looks like it's paid off for Linda Moore. Well, some good shots here, Don. You can set up the possibility of scoring two in one up coming home. There are some who would put up a second guard right here and not bother going in right away. Well, I think you're down to Lindsay Stones, though. Now, I think, you know, I think most teams would go. If you're maybe your seconds rock or something, you might throw up another guard. But I really think, Don, that most teams will go here. This is Lindsay Sparks' first stone, her out turn. You'd be delighted with two points. If you happen to get three, it's the big, big bonus. But two would give the advantage back to you. This will start to come now. But will it come out of the berry? Should see some movement. You're right. Staying out, though. I thought it would break a little more than that. Yeah. Back of the tee line, deep enough. But she can see it. But that's that's good for her. She wants that back behind the tee line. Should uh, Connie happen to hit on this on the nose and stay there, then you could come down to the face of it. Not only do you have the corner guard, you also have a little backing. Yeah. What do you think I could? would be able to do if I couldn't talk with my hands, Don. <laughs> I've almost knocked you out Not three times here. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we didn't give you a cup of coffee, otherwise we'd both be wearing it. I hear you spilled at least a cup of coffee. Oh, poor Vic Router was all over me all week. Oh, look at this. Oh, look at this look shot at this. here. It's a little old dandy. It's a good shot, but it's not in a bad position if Linda Moore can get one on the face of it. Nice shot, Dan. She just got by the front rock. Look at that. Just got by the front rock. And hits it right on the nose. I'm sure Linda will freeze down to the face of that now. Just gets by it. Little roll to the outside, a little further in behind the corner guard. And you heard Linda Moore, and that's one of the things about the game I really appreciate. Here are, are two very competitive teams playing for the top prize and you know, probably the, the number one prize ever in this country to go to the Olympic Games. And you heard Linda Moore turn to Janet Arby and say, nice shot, Janet. And that's... That's a big part of this game. And as you watch this rock, not only when they go to the Olympic Games, they will go as the overwhelming favorites to win both men's and women's divisions. Well, she did not get what she wanted here. She got rid of it, but roll to the open. Yeah, if you can, roll to the open if you can, rather than behind. And Alberti talking about staying in the open, too. Well, that's right, because she doesn't want, uh, you know, doesn't want to leave anything for Linda Moore to freeze up to. Well, that was a good shot by Lindsay. Yeah, that was a tough one to pick out of there. Kind of surprised that she might, you know, she could have come down to it and just kind of just touched That's the back. That's what I thought she was going to do, I think. I, I realize She may have she... maybe been a little heavy, I don't know. But maybe no. the intention was to pick it out all along. Well, I don't know. It's, it was hard to tell that she didn't yeah. really get it as a clear call. But I know what she doesn't want to do. Of course, she doesn't want to have, you know, to give up the, to give up the single and go home tied up without last rock. But... No. That means don't sweep it. That's right. Or you're in trouble. Now, she'll be in the open, but it's too thin. Well, she's going to roll out as well. Yeah. Gonna... She's I gone. She'll give Linda the chance to go behind that corner again. So that guard can still be useful, but uh, not easy to get behind. So we'll uh, be back with her shot in a moment when we return to Calgary. Now there's Atra Plus to make it smoother. The advanced lubricants in a unique white Lubra Smooth Strip are released to deliver Gillette's closest, most comfortable shave ever. Face it, nothing comes closer to your kind of shave. Atra Plus from Gillette, the essence of shaving. Linda Moore's rock is underway, playing the intern draw behind the guard out in front. Her first of two in the end. She trails by a point five four. This is the ninth end, and she's got a lot of room here. Curling now for her, but coming over every so slowly. Yeah, she just took a little too much ice. She had good weight. To Perfect weight. I got it back far enough. I don't think that... Uh, Connie can get the roll in behind the, the long guard to force them to draw for one, so 
She had perfect weight, Don. She just seemed to take a little too much ice, I think. If yep. it had uh, just broken a little earlier, she could could have got it buried. Maybe uh, too preoccupied with the possibility of wrecking on the guard and taking the extra ice to make sure, but as a result, you see that rock sticking out by about a half. And in the men's game, the sixth end is underway with nothing doing as we go down to skip rocks there at a 1 1 tie. Lukowicz and Ryan will keep you posted. Key shot for Connie Laliberti. She threw a lot of weight, but she doesn't want to rule a lot, otherwise, she lets Linda throw the. Throw it through. Good looking shot. That's really surprising that shot because that came more probably with big weight than the draw did. It sure did. It really moved at that last yeah. moment. And then the Moore wants to hit this and roll out. She doesn't Fly want to open. stay. She you want to try it with the out turn? Well, you'd have to cross it, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, you can in that spot. Okay, well. Funny. First. Whatever you feel most comfortable. It's okay. So what she wants to do is get rid of this, roll out, keep last rock to use for one to tie, but ideally two to win on the tenth end. That's right. Now well, if she can get the blank here, she'll pull all those stoppers out to try and score two points. No. This would be a very, very tough situation to uh, stick when you're trying to blank because what you do is it get is the tie, wide. but you ham the hammer over in the last end. The intern? Okay. Now she's got to roll right across the rings. You can see Lindsay just cleaning up the area. The area that she's going to have to roll across if she's going to try and blanket. Preparing the flight path. Linda's put in a solid game this afternoon. But needs this blank. Needs this. Needs this badly. Oh, fine. She's got it. What a good shot. Nothing doing in the ninth end. Moore choosing to blank will have last rock advantage down a point playing the tenth. And we'll be back to bring it to you along with action for the men's game. As the Labatt's National Curling Trials continue on CT. The Max Bell Arena this afternoon where Canada's representation in the curling competition of the Olympic Games next winter is being decided this afternoon. And it's pretty much up in the air right now. Pat Ryan has blanked four ends in a row ever since Eddie Lukowicz scored a single on the second end, and that game remains locked at one as they're into a seventh end now. The women's game, well, that's coming home, the tenth end, and Lala Birdie against Moore with a five to four lead, but Linda Moore, who blanked the ninth end, the first time she's been successful in doing that today, retains the hammer here in the final end. And here is Penny Ryan's rock on its way. To bring our viewers up to date, uh, Jana Arnett was asked to put her first rock at the top of the forefoot. It slipped behind the T line to the back of the forefoot. It'll be coming into view in a moment. And, uh, and Penny Ryan this. was asked to throw the corner guard up with her first one. Jan Arnett split the first one off. And now you see Penny Ryan throwing up another corner guard. Linda Moore will go all out, Don, pull all the stops out to try and score her two points and try not to enter that extra end without the advantage of last rock. She's wasting no time in getting that underway. Green Peters aware of that situation too. Wants to get rid of the guard and she does. Twin sister Corinne. I tell you, I get a feeling we're in for a dramatic finish in both these games. Just the way it's been going along here, so tight. Oh, Very little margin for error. Yeah, we certainly got uh, a close one in both right now, and this is the tenth end. And Linda Moore, for all intents and purposes, in her mind, has got it tied already. She's just looking for that extra point to make it to, to give her the win. She's going to the other side this with Debbie. This time with Debbie Jones's first shot. She's playing the corner guard, the same shot. She wants it out in front. You see her say, whoa, 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 because for the guard she wants, that's got a pretty good head of steam. Much too deep. Yeah, she doesn't want this in the rings. It allows, uh, hmm. it allows Connie to play in the rings. Yeah, that changes things. Yeah, it sure does. You got She wanted that corner guard up in front. Oh, you can see Debbie's absolutely furious yep. with herself. 
she knows what it means. I mean, a front end career knows in, in this kind of a situation, and you're asked for a corner guard in the 10th inning, you got to make it. As Peters did right there for Lila Birdie to lie to. Mind you, that shot rock is back, and that's what she's looking at now, the T-line. Linda Moore could freeze to it. She There's will, I think, Don. That's what she'll play. She's got a couple of rocks in play. She'll try and get uh, Debbie to freeze to the face of this. Again, not taking very much ice. That's how straight it runs with the outturn down there. So it is a good opportunity for Debbie Jones to make up for that last shot. A couple of other tough shots she's had in this game. For weight, she likes the line, likes the direction of it as it comes over toward the center line. Coming now, now though, Don. It's coming now. If they can freeze it to the face. Oh, it's a good looking shot. Good looking shot. I'll say that's a great shot by Debbie. They actually took it before to delete a little bit. So she'll feel a lot better about things right now after that shot. Sigh of relief. Right here, they should be just leaving it. That brush yeah, a little bit. Yeah, you can bit. hit it out even. Yeah, if you want to nitpick, the only problem with it was that she did just move it by a couple of inches. It's That's a great a shot, shot by Debbie. Yeah. It's a super shot. Absolutely perfect. You know, if they just leave a little bit, it would have been frozen a little bit more. You can squeeze it out, but it's a tough shot. Janet Harvey goes gunning for it. Janet got it outside a little bit. Is it going to come enough? Here it comes now. She's going to pick it. Clean. My goodness, what a shot. Well, you can see Janet thought she'd missed it uh, by the expression on her face. It just stayed out. She just picks it out. It catches a little bit of the back one, but out it goes. Job done. But all is not lost for Linda Moore because that back one is still there. Back of the forefoot, and she's going to come right back with the same attempt to freeze by Lindsay. Front end players at a 10th end like this have got to be awfully happy when their shots are completed. <laughs> That's right. They sure are. You know, it, it, it just, it's another example of how important each position is, Don. I mean, oh, there's just yeah. no position. You know, Yes, the pressure of the shots get greater as you move down from lead to second to third to skip. But when you get in these 10th end situations and, and in the last three or four ends of every game, it, every shot is full of pressure. Truly really a team game. Miss here by any one member of, of Connie's team could cost you the second, the second point and a loss. Good looking line here. Just going to curl a little too much. Well, this Look at this here. Nice and tight. Another good shot. Well, unquestionably, that is the hardest shot at curling. That freeze. The perfect freeze is, without a doubt, the toughest shot. It's got to be perfect for line and perfect for weight. You can see how good the weight was. It just curled a. Just a couple inches too much. But once again, it's a delicate shot for, you know, oh, sure. Janet Harvey has to hit it on the center line side and try and squeeze it out. Can't throw this outside. Hurry! Oh. Yep. Hurry! 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 It's really moving on her. You can see it come across the center line a little bit. She's got to catch a corner of it. Really stopping now. Oh, no. He left it there for second shot. That you really did see. take off on Janet. She's just sick about it, and that's what we just talked about. Yeah. One shot could turn a game right over. Right this gives Linda Moore the opportunity to get her two points. And Janet knows it. And a trip back to Calgary next February. She had to kill that rock and just did corner it, leaving it for second shot. So ideally, they could trade shots for two. But there are no gimmies. The shooter here is oh so valuable. Every shot Moore now, you can just feel the tension mm. in the building. Everybody knows it's a very knowledgeable crowd here. They know what that meant. Now, Lindsay Sparks has got to make a shot. She wants to hit her to touch on the center line side and roll away to take away any possible doubles. This second point is the is the winning point. The rock that Lindsay Sparks is 
in the hack, trying to set up now. They can exchange two stones. If Lindenburg can exchange two stones, she can win this game. In turn hit. For the left hand. Straight spot now. Not much weight. It's not. Here it comes now. She hasn't got a lot of weight. He had finally came oh, over. What a good it. shot. There's no double there, Don. No. And been around a long satisfied. time, Lindsay Sparks. She's a world and a Canadian champion. Double, I guess. Maybe there. on my last shot. Okay. Right. For the double. Yeah. Hmm. She thinks it's yeah. there. It, it, it's it's normal. Just... It's thin. It, it, it's a tough one. Very thin. She's got to catch the stone thick enough to come across. She catches it too thin. Of course, she'll roll off in behind the, the shot. There are a couple of options. One would be to hit and roll to the right of where you see it there. Just take that one. Try and get them close together, Don, and then maybe make the double with your next one. Yeah. The key here is you've got to hit and stick and force, uh, well, force Linda Moore to have to hit and stick. She thinks, give her a free draw. she thinks it's there. Let's see what she gets. <laughs> Starting on the wide side, they wait for it. I think she's going to miss it. Just too thin, maybe. She, oh, she missed it. And what a chance for Linda Moore. I, I think she'd be better off to play it just as a hit and try and roll them close together. See, she knew how thin it was, and that preyed on her mind, I'm sure, as she threw that, uh, that shot. And as a result, she missed everything. Well, she had to hit it with good weight, fairly thick, and roll, try and roll it right across. And she threw the big weight, but she... <sighs> well, Mr. Chevy, where would you like to put this one? You're supposed to ask me that, by the way. <laughs> All right, I'll ask you. <laughs> well, you know, you, it's kind of an interesting situation. You want to make sure that you spread them out. You don't want to give her anything to come down to. Or anything to hide behind. So you don't play it short. What if I tried to put it in front of the two lane biting the four so she could draw to the back corner and get shot? Yeah. What she's talking about is putting it in, Either you know, side. in front of the T-line on the forefoot like so, so she can't freeze to it in that area there. And that's a pretty good shot, I think. Probably as good as any. You know, there's a lot, there's some options. You can spread it right out. She's going to call the girls down. Yeah, this one with so much at stake is worth a meeting. And let's listen in as to what they come up with. What a dilemma. <laughs> what a dilemma. <laughs> yeah. Wow, where's Bruton? This, the thing I said is, if we where's... try it to the top of the four, even if she draws to her back one, I have a draw for two. Like, to put it in for shot rock, she's got a minute. But, you, know, you just got to make sure that you don't set up anything. Yeah. Triple. What do you think, Lizzie? Like, if we go open and she, she wires it on ours, we get one. Because both of those are even. She'd be shot rock. So if you put my top four, you're stuck with three things. What do you what do you think? The wolf over here? You need another roll up here. But we still have a shot for one. Yeah. Okay. What do you want to do, Linda? What do you feel most comfortable doing? Um, well, I don't know. I just think if we go way open for third shot. We're leaving there some possibilities. Right, that's just going to freeze, right? Yeah. It's just going to freeze so for sure. She throws lots of weight. They, they talked about this shot. This is the one I showed you before, right in this area here. They're also mentioning going over to this area here, kind of spreading it out. What Linda's afraid of, if you do that, then she'll come down into this area and freeze it onto yep. this one and be shot rock. You heard her mention, you heard her mention that if I play it to the top of the forefoot, then she can't freeze to me. That probably is the best shot. I guess the thing is, if we put it there, and she does make the double, she'll be shot rocking off to take her out. 
I guess yeah. it'll be in a good spot anyway. The thing about this dog is you can't protect everything. And I, I kind of yeah. liked what, what she, her first thought, been. putting it I think in. So. Over on the side? No, on the on Wait, the tee right line. Down. Four foot, right? Right in the top of the four yeah. foot, okay? Yeah. So do on I. the center line. I like that the best. And you, yes, you can leave her a double, but even if she makes the double, you're going to be able to play the hit for the win. Well, you have to leave her something. You can't protect everything. That's and a right. double is not a cinch. What is the top four, right? Yeah. To be, to be honest with you, Pat R Ryan has kind of slowed up his game, Don, just to, you know why, he's yeah. got his eyes on this game and this shot right here. Absolutely. He was uh, forced to take one after blanking. One, two, three, four ends. He claimed a single point finally in the seventh end. That's a job well done by Lukowicz in defending the two-point possibility for so long in the match. Now, here's his big shot by Linda Moore on its Top way. four foot, she says. You don't want it too deep. You don't want it behind the T-line. Set, set up any kind of a pocket. It's digging in a little better now. Starting to slide a bit. Maybe a touch deeper than she wanted, though. A uh, little bit deeper than she wanted, but a pretty good shot. I don't... It's just a little too deep, Don. If it's on the top four foot, you yep. really force Connie to play it. Now she can freeze to the face of it or just tap it back, and you have a tough time getting that rock out. Just came a little too far. Would have been perfect just up at the top of that blue circle. So about here. Pat Ryan probably say, Diddy Lukowicz, can we quit for a while? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> can I take a look? <laughs> <laughs> well, what Connie's going to do is try and come down here, sit in this area, right in this area here, right in front of this stone here. Just move this back slightly, maybe. But even if you freeze to the face, it's a good... And that really is all she has. I'm not taking very much ice, Don. The weight so Just critical. Just a little less, Don. A little good. Even less ice. Well, I think she's just going to move, try and move it back and sit in front of it and force uh, Linda Moore to, to play it past the three stones. Yeah, she is got a lot of weight. Play a quiet hit on this and hope to roll over in front of the one on the left, back of the uh, yeah, four foot, I think. That's I don't like the call. After. This game could be over right here. It's starting on the center line. Ooh, I think it's gone. They don't come here very much. I think it's gone. Goodbye. No, she's got, she's got the little wick. No, she's nope. got the tie. One more for the win now, as uh, Connie hangs on for second shot, but very unhappy because that is not nice the result weight. she wanted. Well, you can see now that that Linda Moore will take her time here. She's playing the out turn. Any piece of this stone, and it's all over. It's a trip to the Winter Olympics next February for the girls from BC. She has first and third shots. So as you say, the shooter is not important. Contact with this red Just rock is. That's all that matters now. Yeah. And so it all comes down to this. Any part of the stone, her line looks good. The girls are on it. I think it's all over, Don. It's running pretty straight. She's got it. She's got it. Look at Penny. They're in the Olympics. It's all over. Lee on the last end does it. Overcoming a 5-4 lead by Lala Birdie and taking it by a 7-5 score here at the Max Bell in Calgary. Good shot for Lindsay. And here's Lindsay now. Oh He's been around so much longer oh, than many of these curlers. Getting a just reward for an outstanding career along with the other three and going to the Olympic Games right here in Calgary as the champions of Canada in the winter of 88. Great moment for them all. We'll have more as we come back to the Labatt's National Curling Trials in Calgary in just a moment. Linda Moore and her team from Vancouver defeat Connie Laliberti of Winnipeg 7-5 to go to the Olympic Games and the women's competition here next February. And Bernie Sparks, a 12-time Briar competitor, didn't make it, but his wife, Lindsay, sure did. So now, let's go down to the skip of this fine team with Ray Turnbull. Linda, congratulations. You must be ecstatic. A fantastic game. 
Well, we're very happy. I, I must say we have so much respect for Connie and her team, and it was a great game. We knew it would be difficult. We got our break in the last end, and we capitalized on it. Well, it was a sensational last end. You ran into that problem, but where, where do you put that third stone? I felt for you. I know. It's a tricky sheet, too. If we'd left her the freeze, I don't know if I could have gotten it out for two, and we wanted to make sure we could have a chance for two anyway. My rock came a little bit deep, but it worked out all right. Your thoughts? the Winter Olympics representing your country. Well, your we're, thoughts about that? We're just so proud. Uh, what a great field to come through and win, and now to wear the Maple Leaf again, it's just fantastic. Well, congratulations to you and the whole team. It was a sensational, sensational game of great entertainment for us. Thank you again. Thanks very much. D Don, back up to you. All right. The women's title decided, the men still to come. When we come back to Calgary from the Labatt's National Curling Trials at the Max Bell Arena, stay with us. More good curling still ahead. So Linda Moore, Lindsay Sparks,